This design of water-powered trip hammer was in its heyday 1720 to 1850. This one dates from 1742, although I dare say that it has been upgraded and repaired so many times since then that little from that year remains. The hammer operator made about 84 scythe blades a day. He sat on a seat suspended on a single iron rod which gave him great freedom of movement. Beneath was a shallow trough filled with sand or water. If he accidentally dropped a very hot bit of metal, this would catch it gently and safely. Do you see how each wooden tooth is individually replaceable? With one tooth in every socket on these cams, the hammering could be made very rapid. Now this I love! This water-powered axle once turned and these beautifully curving three-pointed cams over which rode a wheel in a tipping beam worked these vertical rods up and down which powered these drums set into the ceiling. They were huge bellows and these blew air along this pipe across the ceiling and down to this junction with its two valves. Mm, valves which regulated airflow to the 1000 degree furnace on the right and the 900 degree one on the left. Here you see the furnaces where the crucibles would be heated for about four hours before the puller out, his legs wrapped in water soaked cloth, would extract them and the teamer would pour out the metal into ingots. One thing I'm going to guess about the Victorian workers who were down here is that uh, they weren't terribly tall. The life expectancy of the grinders was very low because the fine hot dust of sandstone gave them silicosis, much like flint nappers used to get. They worked in the grinding hull. You could probably find it by following a man with a bad cough. <laughs>